What's up guys, Mikkel here. And one of the stories that I believe is going to be the biggest to unfold over the next couple months is the story of Tether. Guys, there has been so much Tether FUD over the past couple years that I believe many people have truly lost sight of what dangers Tether really does impose on the cryptocurrency market. Guys, in this video, I plan to break down for you what FUD is real and what FUD isn't and what I believe is going to happen to Tether over the long run. Guys, this has big implications for both Ripple and XRP and all the cryptocurrencies I believe that are trying to solve real world utility in the financial system. Guys, this is a video you are not going to want to miss. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Guys, these two things really do mean so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, as many of you probably fully understand, I am not making this video to FUD Tether. In fact, I'm just providing my real-time views on what is happening to this market. Back a couple years ago, I always thought it was kind of crazy to think that the SEC might consider Ethereum a security. And the reason why I thought that was crazy was because the SEC was so involved in the Ethereum ICO, I thought it would be absolutely insane for the SEC to then go after Ethereum because they were essentially going to be digging up their own skeletons and showing the public that, hey, there is some sketchy stuff going on between the SEC and Ethereum during Ethereum's initial coin offering. Now, what we ended up seeing was something dramatically different. And I actually changed my mind on that opinion as soon as I saw Prometheum come through the door. As soon as I saw Prometheum register with the SEC, and as soon as I saw the SEC working proactively with Prometheum to call Ethereum a security, I realized that the SEC had something up their sleeve, and what they were going to do turned out to be go after Ethereum for everything after the merge, so they didn't have to dig up their own skeletons involving the ICO, but then they could still go after Ethereum. So guys, it was that data that made me relook at the Ethereum situation and say, okay, it looks like something's actually going on here. Now, for a long time, there has been theories in the entire cryptocurrency industry that Tether was completely unbacked and Tether was going to go on a death spiral similar to what happened to Terra Luna. And guys, this has always been something I pushed back hard against. I fully believe Tether has most of the money they say they do. And even if they don't, they have enough to meet redemptions. This is something to me, I believe, because I have seen multiple trusted third parties look at Tether's books and confirm that that money is there. These are financial institutions that are putting their reputation on the line, so they have no incentive to lie on Tether's behalf. Now, with that said, I do think there are serious issues with Tether going forward, and I want to break down for you guys exactly how I think things are going to play out and how Ripple and XRP are poised to benefit big. Now, guys, what we're seeing and the main reason I wanted to make this video is we're seeing a lot of exchanges now rethinking their relationship with Tether. We have seen this around a lot, but we just saw Kraken, obviously a very big exchange, once again saying they're reviewing their plans to list USDT. Now, I believe what we're seeing is a global crackdown against Tether. And the question is why? If Tether is backed, then why are all these jurisdictions going after Tether, right? What's the big deal? Well, the problem really comes in the fact that Tether is a centralized company. And centralized companies are not bad in my opinion, but you can't get away with the fact that, hey, this is a decentralized system. We don't know where money's going when you're a centralized counterparty. Because Tether has full control over where the money goes, and Tether also has the ability to do KYC and know your customer. So the big issue Tether is facing is they haven't wanted to do any of this throughout their entire time as a company. In fact, they have facilitated a lot of different things in the industry that they likely knew were going on, but simply knew that they could make a lot of money off of it. We saw Tether heavily involved in FTX, Celsius, BlockFi. We saw Tether they're heavily involved in Hamas, a lot of terrorist funding, a lot of criminal activity that they knew was going on. Now, this stuff happens in blockchain in general because it's decentralized. People can use the blockchain for whatever they want. But the problem with Tether is, is they're literally onboarding these people. Tether has the ability to do know your customer. Tether has the ability to control the funds. It's all centralized. They choose not to. So what Tether has really done is take a stand against the system. They've essentially come out and said, look, we don't care that we know we're supposed to be doing this stuff. We're simply not going to do it. And that's the big issue for Tether. 
they have the biggest stable coin in the entire world. There is no doubt about it. It is critically important to the crypto ecosystem. There is no doubt about it. But Tether has not been willing to play nice with the controllers of the system. Tether has not been willing to play nice with the financial institutions and the governments who hold all the power. So Tether has really pushed themselves away from what will be the regulated financial system in the future. Because Tether has proved over the years they're simply not going to listen to anyone despite the fact that they really should be listening to these people because these are the corporations and partnerships they want to build in the future. Now, I want to keep going and talk about the fact that Brad Garlinghouse has said multiple times that the U.S. government is going to go after Tether. And I believe Brad Garlinghouse is just speaking from common sense here. Why? Because Brad Garlinghouse, as the CEO of Ripple, has taken a completely different approach. Rather than do everything the institutions don't want you to do, rather than doing everything that the governments don't want you to do, he took the approach of work with the government, work with the institutions, work with all these different regulatory bodies in order to make sure they are being as compliant as possible. Now, some people will come back and say, oh, the Ripple SEC case, this is an example of Ripple doing the same thing. It's completely different. There was no fraud in the Ripple SEC case. It's essentially just a process issue. How Ripple was supposed to go about distributing their XRP, whether they were supposed to register with the SEC, CFTC, no one, there was nothing wrong with the act. It was just a process issue. What Tether is doing is completely different. They are breaking laws, obviously, and blatantly and knowingly. They know they're doing this. It could not be more obvious. They are choosing to go against what the authorities are telling them and purposely dodging a lot of these actions. So this is completely different between Ripple's approach and what Tether is doing. Tether is purposely going against the rules and regulations. Ripple was begging for rules and regulations and got sued by a corrupt regulator. So this is where I believe is going to be the biggest differentiator in a company like Ripple and a company like Tether going forward. Ripple has been more than willing to work with the authorities, work with these different institutions, and that builds trust. At the end of the day, despite the fact that we are moving to a new financial system, there is still going to be a massive amount of trust required for the next 20 to 30 years. As governments start to adopt this technology, they are going to require trust. They are going to require that they can trust the parties they are engaging in. And what Tether has proven is they can absolutely not be trusted, and in fact, they're simply going to do whatever they want. What we know is stable coins are going to be absolutely critical to the next generation financial system. And I believe that next generation financial system is not going to be owned by people like me and you. It's going to be people who own the current system, the people who hold all the value, the Black Rocks, the JP Morgans, all these different institutions with all the assets. They're going to issue their assets on these public blockchains, and we're likely going to see them using the new rails, but still have all the money. I don't think that's going to switch. I don't think the equation is going to be different. What Tether is really focusing on is providing value to the retail people who want to opt out of the system, the people who want to be able to do whatever they want for their money. And guys, I think that's going to have some level of application in the future. What we see is today the dark web is still a thing. People use it to buy things that they can't buy in the normal, normal web. Does that mean the dark web doesn't have utility? No, it absolutely does have utility. You can argue whether or not that utility is good or bad, but it has utility. And then in that same exact way, Tether is always going to have utility in facilitating payments that people don't want in the regulated financial system. And I think what we're really watching right now is a divergence between the regulated cryptocurrency financial system and the unregulated one. I really do believe that the regulated one is going to be the one that drives most of the value, just as the normal internet drives most of the internet traffic and not the dark web. I really do believe Tether is going down the path of the dark web, while Ripple and Circle, they're moving towards the path of how do we build of how do we build institutional grade financial products that are going to be critical in the next generation financial system. Like I said, we are still at the place where the United States is going to have to pick partners to help build some of this stuff out that they trust. Do you really think the United States is going to trust working with Tether when Tether has blatantly violated all the laws put in place that they were supposed to be following? Clearly not. On the other side of the equation, though, we see Ripple, who has been working with these regulators since the beginning and winning cases in court against the regulators who have gone rogue against them, we see them continuing to build out their reputation and show that they're looking to provide cryptocurrency products to financial institutions in a regulatory compliant way, but to make the system better. Guys, this is the approach I believe is going to win. And like I said, 
I don't think this necessarily makes Tether unimportant. I don't think it makes Tether go away. I don't even think it means that Tether is necessarily a bad company. I just think Tether is playing a completely different game and the market share they are going to get from that is going to be dramatically smaller than the market share that Ripple might be able to drive. Something else I wanted to talk about quickly here that I think is really important is the fact that Tether is kind of acknowledging this themselves now. Tether CEO came out the other day and said nobody in Europe or the United States really needs a stable coin. In my opinion, this is absolutely insane to see. Of course, we need stable coins in Europe and the United States, just like anyone else in the world needs a stable coin. It's the key link to DeFi. It's the key link to be able to get access to a lot of these new age financial tools. Stable coins are going to be critical, and we've even heard institutional investors come out and say, we cannot wait to start building stable coins, money market funds on different blockchains in order to help facilitate our value transfer. So right here, we see the Tether CEO pretty much confirming what we have thought this entire time, right? Tether is starting to push push themselves out of the regulated financial system and try to make waves in the unregulated financial system. Guys, in my opinion, this is going to be how the market goes in the future. I believe Tether is carving out a path to be the dark web of cryptocurrency and Ripple instead is trying to become the Google, the Amazon, whoever you want to pick. I want to be invested in the Googles and Amazons, not the Napsters, not the things on the dark web. While they will still have utility, it's just not the same level of promise in the regulated financial system. That's where the big institutions lie. That's where all the assets are. That's where the big money is. And therefore, that's where I want to be investing into the rails. Guys, I say this all the time on the channel, but I really do think we figured it out before anyone else. Most of the cryptocurrency industry, in my opinion, is simply focused on the wrong things. What we are focused on is how these rails solve real world problems in the financial system, how they're being adopted, how they're going to be used. And guys, I believe the protocols that do the best job of really taking our current outdated financial system, updating it and putting it into a cryptocurrency era. Those are going to be the protocols. Those are going to be the tokens that win big. I don't think you do that by going against the system. I don't think you do that by going against all the money. I think you do that by working with them and building them products they can ultimately utilize. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, pickle out.